Welcome. I'm Dr. Sanjay Gupta. No one really knows why Einstein was Einstein or where amazing mental abilities really come from. But over the next hour, we're going to tell you what we do know about creativity, about high intelligence, about how to make yourself and your kids smarter, about that awesome power we call genius. Just looking at a human brain, you can't tell if it belongs to a genius or a fool. You can't even tell if it's from a man or a woman. But now, imagine actually seeing the birth of an idea. With high-tech imaging, that's what they do at the Mental Illness and Neurodiscovery, or MIND, Institute in New Mexico. It's a world-renowned center for brain research. This image was taken through a process called magnetoencephalography. You sound smart just saying it. It shows electrical activity, millisecond by millisecond. You're seeing the brain activity over a course of one single second. So in that second, all these different things are happening in the brain. First light up, the brain region handling sight as the test subject looks at something. Next, the motor cortex, muscle control as the subject points a finger in response. And then up in this part of the brain, this is the frontal part of the brain, the frontal cortex, prefrontal cortex, in which a lot of the action happens involved with decision making, problem solving, integration of ideas, narrowing the focus down to the specific right answer. They say the higher the intelligence, the faster this pathway lights up. Based on other kinds of imaging, Dr. Rex Young and his colleague Richard Heyer say the brains of smart people are different from average brains. Here's one surprise, the higher the IQ, the less brain activity, as signified by the cool green color. The smart brain is more efficient. It might be that more intelligent people have more tissue in certain areas to process information, and therefore the tissue overall doesn't have to work at, as hard. For what you are about to see next, we must enter quietly into the realm of genius. In the popular imagination, the genius is a loner standing head and shoulders above the crowd. The artist Leonardo da Vinci, Isaac Newton who invented calculus and explained gravity, Mozart composed music by the age of five, and of course Albert Einstein, whose ideas about time and space turned the universe inside out. But Keith Sawyer, a psychologist who has studied children, jazz musicians, and comedians, says even the most celebrated minds build on the work of others. Even something exceptional like Einstein coming up with the theory of relativity is based in the same mental building blocks as you finding your way around a traffic jam. So creativity researchers have discovered that there are underlying processes in the brain which all of our intelligent thought is based on. Intelligence is often measured by IQ, where a score of 100 is average. But genius clearly requires more than a high score. genius is hard to define. For example, that may sound like Mozart, but it was written by a computer programmed by a California college professor. And what to make of people like Stephen Wiltshire, a mentally challenged artist who barely spoke until he was six years old, yet he displays vast talent and astounding memory. After studying a city skyline for just a few hours, he can draw it from memory with breathtaking clarity. A bit later, we'll explore the world of savants like Wiltshire and what they tell us about the link between intelligence and creativity. Researchers say they're not the same thing. For now, let's look at the creative process. I think of creativity as an emergent phenomenon, meaning that the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. The jazz ensemble, the pianist, the saxophone player aren't composing the piece, but they're interacting with each other and they generate something unexpected and unpredictable. When an improvisational theater performance, what the actors generate is better than what any one actor could have done alone. To demonstrate, Sawyer brought us to the I.O. Theater in Chicago, a comedy landmark that helped launch performers like Amy Poehler and Mike Myers. Improvisation has incredibly important lessons for any collaborative group. What it really takes is the ability to hear what's going on around you and connect it in a new way. These actors invent a scene based on a single suggestion from the audience. Brain scans. Brain scans. Flowers. Milkshakes. Rainbows. Childhood memories. 
There's no script. They make it up as they go along. I'm going to autograph this for you because <laughs> you're going to want to know who diagnosed you with Lemington syndrome. <laughs> Me, Dave Lemington. There you go. What is it? What do I have to do? Let me ask you a simple question. What color is your shirt? Don't look down. You cheddar. <laughs> oh, no! So why is improv a good example of the creative process? Rather than one big moment of insight, creativity is generally a build-up of many small bits of insight over time, each bit of insight emerging from hard work. When you see an improvisational group on stage, it's not one actor having a brilliant punchline, but it's an accumulation over time of all the actors each contributing a little bit. The key to any innovation, not just comedy, Sawyer says, is the group working together, building on each other's ideas. It's a good thing you suck me out. You don't have Bennington's disease, you have Barrington's disease. I'm Dr. Steve Barrington. <laughs> Barrington, get away from Barrington. Barrington. It's Lemington's disease. Barrington. Lemington. Oh. It has every sign of Lemington. Oh, really? It's even in the Bible, right? There's nothing new under the sun. Creativity is the ability to make connections. It's making connections in your mind between concepts, and in particular, connections that no one's thought of before. Rex Young says those connections are based on the interplay inside the brain between so-called white matter and gray matter. To better explain, we asked a pathologist, Dr. Robert Riker, to bring in a real brain. We would slice it open to see how the parts are linked. What I'll be interested in looking at as we go through the brain is how it's wired together. Gray matter really is gray, and the white matter is white. Fine branches of neurons linking different areas. The importance of that is that this is a superhighway. This white matter area is a superhighway connecting the front to the back of the brain. So you're looking at these crossing white matter fibers that globally connect up different parts of the brain. Young believes that creativity, like improv comedy, is inspired by the need to adapt to form new brain connections. I think we spend some 90-some percent of our lives in very predictable environments. What happens with that other 5 or 2 or 1 percent of our life where things become very unpredictable and we have to make a decision on the fly? Now comedians are adept at that. His colleague Richard Heyer is more skeptical. He says a group will never be smarter than its most intelligent member. He also says that heredity is the biggest factor, that for better or worse, we are born with the tools of genius or without them. Someday, young and higher say brain scans might replace an IQ test or even the SAT for college. But for now, the secret of genius remains tantalizingly out of reach. <laughs>